Uh, thank you to the moderators, and uh, thank you to Sages for the opportunity to speak at the podium. Uh, so my project was called Laparoscopic Peristomal Hernia Repair Delays Recurrence Relative to Open Repair. And I have nothing to disclose, so, so peristomal hernias, of course, is uh, an issue that affects patients who have um, ostomies. So how big of an issue is that? Well, um, estimates say that there's about a million patients currently living uh, with ostomies in, in the U.S. Most of those patients will be able to have those ostomies reversed. However, a subset will have to uh, keep their ostomies permanently, and of those patients, about 58% will go on to develop a peristomal hernia. That can lead to reduced quality of life in these patients due to symptoms, and when they have symptoms, um, surgical management becomes necessary. Now, the problem is, once these are repaired uh, surgically, then peristomal hernia recurrence remains as high as 56%, according to recent studies. And then there's really not that much research out there to guide surgeons on the optical, on the optimal surgical management of these patients. So when it does come to um, surgical repair for these patients, uh, there's a few different options. First of all, mesh is recommended to be used instead of just doing uh, sutures in the tissue because of much higher recurrence when you don't use mesh. Uh, when it comes to laparoscopic repairs, um, it's been shown that laparoscopic sugar baker, um, which has this lateralization of the ostomy through the mesh, has been superior to other forms of laparoscopic repair um, in terms of recurrence. When it comes to open repairs, there's no such consensus, but onlay, sublay, and intraperitoneal mesh placement have all been shown to be effective. Now, when it comes to comparing laparoscopic versus open for these patients, um, there's insufficient evidence to guide surgeons. So that was the aim of our study, was to compare open versus laparoscopic in terms of hernia recurrence. Um, and then we wanted to do that using laparoscopic sugar baker and only compare that to open repairs that used mesh, since those are the most highly um, recommended versions of each. And so this was a retrospective study it was done by a, a single surgeon at an academic medical center. We had 62 patients over the course of nine years, and we looked at a variety of outcomes, including short-term as well as long-term hernia recurrence, and we also looked at those recurrences over time using a Kaplan-Meier estimate. So these were our patients. Again, we had 62 patients. They were similar um, across most uh, all pre-existing comorbidities. We had um, well-matched groups um, in terms of number and age and other factors. As far as operative factors, again, patients were uh, pretty similar in both groups. They had similar types of ostomies. Um, they had similar European hernia society classifications for peristomal hernias, which meant that the hernias were of similar size and of uh, presence of concurrent ventral hernia, ventral incisional hernia. Uh, the groups did differ in a few ways. The, group, the patients receiving open repair did have uh, more previous peristomal hernia repairs, and then uh, those patients also had a higher preoperative wound class. So our clinical outcomes. So laparoscopic repair of these peristomal hernias gave a benefit in a, a number of short-term areas. So first was it gave a significantly shorter operative duration um, it also decreased the median length of stay in the hospital postoperatively, and it also cut the number of postoperative wound complications in half compared to the patients receiving open, and this included um, deep surgical site infections and wound dehiscence. Um, they were similar across uh, other outcomes that were non-wound complications and 30-day readmission rates. So looking in the long term, um, overall, the recurrence rates were similar for the, for the two groups, around 25%. However, we had this really large difference in median follow-up, and that was due to a recent practice change by our sing single surgeon uh, to doing mostly open in the last few years. However, um, that did not end up favoring the open group, as might be expected, in terms of recurrence. Um, and so we looked at who was recurring at what time, and that gave us uh, this Kaplan-Meier plot, which basically just shows the survival of these repairs. And so you can see that the patients receiving laparoscopic uh, repair of their peristomal hernias essentially had, at any given point in time, had a, a greater likelihood of being free from occurrence 
the difference was smaller at one year, 96% um, hernia free for the lap versus 92% for the open. But um, when you get out to 18 months and two years, you can see the gap really widen. And so that was unadjusted data. We were also able to adjust um, for prior peristomal hernia repair, and that gave us a hazard ratio of 4.2, which means after adjustment, essentially, the patients receiving open repair had a greater than four times likelihood of recurrence of their peristomal hernias. Um, so studies have shown laparoscopic repair um, of peristomal hernias is a safe alternative to open repairs. However, recent surveys uh, nationwide have shown that by far these are being repaired open uh, much more commonly. Um, and then the recent surveys also show that laparoscopy is used far less in peristomal hernias compared to ventral hernias in general. So digging deeper into the peristomal repair literature, uh, the biggest review on this subject was done back in 2012, found no difference uh, between uh, open versus laparoscopic in terms of recurrence rates, but they were using um, a, m a bunch of small studies that, that really were just um, case series. They didn't have any comparative studies to look at, and then only one long-term comparative study has been done since then. It showed uh, an advantage in laparoscopic surgery in terms of recurrence, but the group that they compared to in the open was comprised of mainly uh, primary uh, suture repair, not using mesh, and so that would have led to higher recurrence rates. And then there was a short-term study done more recently that showed an advantage for laparoscopic in terms of short-term outcomes, such as uh, reduced wound infections and length of stay, and that was replicated by our study. The, those short-term effects were. Um, and so no study has yet shown a long-term benefit in terms of uh, hernia recurrence um, for either laparoscopic or open, and so uh, in a direct comparison, and so our study may be the first to do that. And so in conclusion, um, our study showed that patients receiving laparoscopic surgery not only had a benefit in the short term in terms of reduced length of stay, reduced um, risk of infection, but they also had that increased longevity of their hernia repairs. Um, and so therefore, at our institution, our surgeon will be doing these repairs laparoscopically in the future whenever patient factors allow, um, of course, to make a, a broader recommendation, further studies, including uh, randomized control trials, uh, which would probably need to be multi-center, um, would be needed uh, to be performed. Thank you.